Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Scientific Notation. This is part one. So here we get to learn one of the many, many uses for the concept of an exponent, which we've been studying in previous uh, recent lessons here. We're going to use the idea of an exponent to uh, conquer the topic of scientific notation. Now, as you might guess, scientific notation is used in science, but it's also used in math and engineering and also biology. It's used in all branches of, of, of science and mathematics and engineering. So what is it? Scientific notation is a way to write down really, 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 really large numbers, and also we can use it to write really, 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 really small numbers down. So in this lesson, we're going to concentrate on writing really large numbers down in terms of scientific notation, and in the future, we'll conquer using it to write small numbers. We'll do that a little bit later. So for instance, let's say you're an astronomer and you're looking at the nearest galaxy, all right? Galaxy is really, really far away, right? But you're measuring the galaxy in, I don't know, kilometers. How many kilometers away? So it's a, a large, large, large distance away. Really, it's an incomprehensibly large distance for us to really imagine in our mind. But it's a large number. If you were writing it in kilometers, you would have lots of numbers and lots of zeros going on and on. And it would be a real pain to write down the distance to another galaxy in kilometers because you would have all the digits and it would just go off the page. It would be lots and lots and lots of writing. So those are the kinds of numbers I'm talking about. Really big numbers we can really learn how to use scientific notation for. So for our first problem, we're going to take something a little smaller so we can understand. We're going to take the number 70 and we're going to use this. This is not a terribly large number, but we're going to use it to understand the concept. We're going to write 70 in terms of scientific notation. Now, before we can actually do that, I need to remind you of a couple of things. Let's talk about powers of 10. So we already know that we have 10 to the power of one, right? What does that mean to the power of one? It means that it's multiplied by itself, but there's only one of them here, so it's really just 10, right, essentially. Now, what would come next after 10 to the power of one? That would be 10 to the power of two. Now, this is just an exponent, just like any other exponent that we've already studied, and so that would be 10 times 10. So you see, 10 squared is 10 times 10. There's two of them here, but 10 to the power of one, there's only one of them here. So if you really wanted to calculate the answer, 10 times 10 is going to be 100, if you remember 10 times 10 is 100, and then this 10 is not really multiplied by anything, so it's just 10. So what I'm trying to say, really in a nutshell, is that 10 squared, 10 to the power of two, is really the same thing as multiplying, or, or the same thing as 100, right? Because it's 10 times 10, which is 100. And 10 to the power of one is just the same thing as, as, a, as a 10 there, right? Now let me do one more, uh, and then we'll finish this chart later. But what about 10 to the power of three? What would that be equal to? 10 to the power of three. That would be 10 times 10 times 10. 10 times 10 times 10, All right? And if uh, 10 times 10 is 100, then 10 times 10 times 10 has to be 1,000. Because this 10 times 10 is 100, and then 100 times 10 is, a, is 1,000. So you see the pattern here. When 10 is to the power of 1, it's the answer that you get is just 10. When 10 is to the power of 2, the answer you get is 100. When 10 is to the power of 3, it's 1,000. Basically, when you have 10 to a power, then the exponent that you have is just the number of zeros that you have here. The exponent is two, there's two zeros. The exponent is one, it's one zero. That is a special property of power of 10, and that's the number system that we use, all right? So keep this in the back of your mind, and let's return to our problem. We want to take this large number, it's not that big, but it's a large number, and we want to write it in scientific notation. What you do is you take the number that you have, you take the first digit, and you write it down, and then you put a decimal point after it, and the next digit in the number you write down, and you change it to 7.0. All right, and then what you do is you multiply that times 10 to a power up here. Now, we want to write it in terms of, to make it equal to what we had, so it has to be times 10 to the power of one. Because remember, 10 to the power of one, 10 to the power of one is just 10. So what we're saying here is if you take 7.0 times 10, then what do you do? You take this decimal and you move it one spot to the right. So in your, in your mind, what you're doing is you're taking this decimal here and you're writing it, you're moving it kind of one spot to the right when you, when you multiply by 10 there. So I'm gonna kind of erase that 
and we're gonna kind of do it in our mind here. But the answer to this, there's not too much math that you actually have to do to write the answer down, but I want you to understand that the answer to this in scientific notation is 7.0 times 10 to the one. Scientific notation is always a number times 10 to the power of something. Now, if 10 is raised to the power of one, you're multiplying by 10. If 10 is raised to the power of two, you're multiplying by 100. And you're moving the decimal, in that case, two spots to the right. If you have multiply times 10 to the power of three, you're multiplying by 1,000, which moves three decimal, the, the decimal spot three spots to the right. So remember, with powers of 10, when you multiply by 10, you just move a decimal one spot to the right. When you multiply by 100, you move the decimal two spots to the right. When you multiply by 1,000, you move it three spots to the right. And I can keep making this chart longer and longer. And what you're going to do is you're going to have 10 to the fourth and 10 to the fifth and 10 to the sixth and so on. And so we're going to be using these to solve our problems. All right, keep this in the back of your mind. Let's solve the next problem and I think it'll be even more clear. Let's say that we have a larger number, the number 300. And we want to write this in terms of scientific notation. All you do is you take the very first digit, which is a three, you take the next digit that you have after it, zero, you put a decimal point there. So you want to write it as 3.0 times 10 to the power of something, right? And you just have to decide what to put there, right? But if your original decimal was right here after the three, it has to go one, two spots to the right. So that means it has to be times 10 to the power of two. So whatever the 10 to the power, whatever the power of 10 is, is how many spots you're gonna move the decimal to the right. So your scientific notation is always gonna look like this. It's gonna be a number, decimal point, and a number times 10 to the power of something. A number, decimal, a number times 10 to the power of something. These numbers just come from the number that you have. It has to be a three and it has to be a zero and you, you want the decimal point to always be right after the very first digit. So you write a digit, a decimal point, and then whatever follows in, term, in your number, times 10 to the, and then you pick the power of 10 that moves the decimal the right amount. So in our original problem, if the decimal was here, right, then we would move it two spots to the right. So it has to be 10 to the power of two. In our original problem here, we only have to move the decimal one spot, so it was times 10 to the power of one. Now you might say, well, this looks simpler than this, and this looks simpler than this, so why do we even use this? It's because you're just learning it right now, but really we are gonna use these numbers to measure the distance to galaxies. So the distance to galaxies might have 18 zeros behind it, but then when you have scientific notation, it becomes much smaller to write because it'll maybe be times 10 to the power of 18 or something. Uh, to, and that's easier to write than the number with 18 zeros after it. But your scientific notation will always be the same format. Number, decimal, number, always the decimal after the first digit, times 10 to the power of something. And the power of 10 determines how many digits we move. One spot, two spots is gonna give us 300, which is where we started. All right, let's do another one on this board. How about the number 40? We wanna write it in terms of scientific notation. You just take your number, your first digit comes down, you put a decimal point, your next digit always comes down out of your number, and then you have to multiply times 10 to the power of something to move this decimal the right number of spots to make it equal what you have. We only have to move it one spot to the right, so it has to be 10 to the power of one. Because if our decimal was here, it only has to go one spot to the right. That's what we wrote, 4.0 times 10 to the one means it has to move one spot to the right. So it's 4.0 times 10 to the one. All right, now to conquer any larger numbers, let's write, do a little more with this table, right? 10 to the power of four, then we'll do 10 to the power of five, then we'll do 10 to the power of six, and we'll just stop there. But just know that you can have 10 to the power of seven, power eight, power nine, they, they all exist there. Now 10 to the four is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. 10 to the power of five is 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. And see if I can fit this one in. 10 times 10, there's number three, there's number four, there's number five, there's number, whoops, if I can write 10 correctly. There's number six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. Now, if this is 10 hundred thousand, when you multiply this out, this is gonna be 10,000. And this is gonna be 100,000. And this is going to be, I have to write it underneath, 1 million. 
right? So my point is, is that when you multiply something times 10 to the four, you're multiplying by 10,000, which moves the decimal four spots to the right. When you multiply something times 10 to the five, you're really multiplying by 100,000, which means you're multiplying, moving the decimal five spots to the right, making it larger. When you multiply times 10 to the six, you're really multiplying by a million, which is moving the decimal in your number uh, one, two, three, four, five, six spots to the right. So whatever power of 10 you multiply by, all you're doing is you're moving the decimal to the right that many positions, all right, that many positions. So let's take a look at a few more problems and try to get the hang of something a little bit larger. What about the number 6,000? I wanna write that in scientific notation, all right? All I do is I take my first digit, six, I put a decimal point after, I grab the next digit out of my number and make it a zero. I mean, it is a zero, so I just have the, the, the two digits there, right? And then I have to multiply it times 10 to the power of something. And I, it's gonna move this decimal however many spots this exponent tells me to move it to. So if my decimal were right here, which is after the six, then it would have to go one, two, three spots. So it has to be times 10 to the three. And if you remember, times 10 to the three is multiplying it by a thousand. So what you're doing is you're multiplying 6.0 times a thousand, which is 6,000. That's all you're doing. You're just using the power of 10 to move the decimal the right number of spots. So if you start here and you move it one, two, three positions, then you're gonna get trailing zeros and the answer will be uh, 6,000, which is what you started with. These are the same thing, is, is another way of saying it. All right, now let's do one slightly different. What if the number were 1,300? And we wanna write that in scientific notation. So all you do is you grab the first digit, you put a decimal point after it, and then you grab the second digit, which is a three, right? So in all the other ones, the next digit was a zero, the next digit was a zero, there were zeros, there were zeros. So this is the first time where the second digit here is a number other than zero. That's okay, it just comes down as 1.3 times 10 to the power of what? I need to pick an exponent that will move the decimal the right number of spots is here. So if the decimal were here, I need to move it one, two, three spots. And so the answer is 1.3 times 10 to the three. And that's the final answer. What you're doing is you're taking 1.3 times 1,000 because 10 to the three is just 1,000. Remember that, 10 to the three is just 1,000. So what you're doing is you're taking 1.3 times 1,000, which moves the decimal three spots to the right, and so it's the same as this. All right. What about a really big number? What about 900,000? So here we're starting to get into big, big numbers, but it's exactly the same process. Take the first digit, nine, put a decimal point, take the next digit, zero, so you have 9.0, times 10 to the power of what? You have to pick a number that's gonna move the decimal to write a number of spots. So just put your pencil over here after the nine and count one, two, three, four, five. It has to be times 10 to the five because when you multiply by 10 to the five, you're really multiplying by 100,000, which is moving the decimal five positions to the right from here. One, two, three, four, five. That would be like starting here, one, two, three, four, five. And so these are equal, 9.0 times 10 to the five. All right, what about the number 250? I wanna write 250 in terms of scientific notation. So take the first digit, two, put a decimal point, take the next digit, five, so you have 2.5, times 10 to the power of what? We have to pick something. So if the decimal were between the two and the five, as it is here, we have to move it one, two spots, so we multiply by 10 to the two, which is multiplying by 100. So 2.5 times 100 is moving the decimal two spots, which is 250. All right. What about 16? 16 is a pretty small number. How do we write it in terms of scientific notation? Well, take the first digit, put a decimal, take the second digit, times 10 to the power of what? If the decimal were here, it only needs to move one position that means times 10 to the one. What you're doing is you're taking 1.6 times 10 because this is just comes out to 10, which moves it and makes it 16. All right, and that was the final answer for this lesson. So what we've learned, or that was the final question for this lesson, what we've learned here is that we can use the concept of scientific notation 
to take large numbers and write them in a compact form. Now for these numbers, it may not be so apparent why we care, but it's really used for really, really, really big numbers like distance to the planets or something. Also, we use it for really small numbers. Now I haven't done that in this lesson, we'll do that a little bit later, but if you're talking about the size of an atom, for instance, really, really small fraction of a millimeter or a fraction of a meter, then you're gonna have a really, really, really small number, and so in order to write it properly, we use scientific notation, but we're gonna cover how to do small numbers at a later time. The last thing I will say is that when you're picking the digits here, what you really wanna do is pick the, the all of the non-zero, you, you want a digit in front of the decimal, and you always want a digit after the decimal, but you always wanna have all of the non-zero digits in place. So notice that we had two and a five, those were the non-zero digits, so we wanted them here. A one and a six, those were the non-zero digits, so we wanted them here. Um, and one and a three were the non-zero digits, so we wanted them here, and so on. So if you had something a little bit different, for instance, let's just go ahead and do, let's just do one more real quick. What if I gave you something like 1,347? 1,347, notice there's a lot of digits here. So what do you do? You have one, you have to have that first digit. You always put a decimal point. You have to have the three there, but you have to put these digits in there or else it won't be the same. Like if you put zeros there, then it'll be a different number. So you have to have all of the non-zero digits. You have to have the four and the seven in there too. And then you have to say times 10 to the what? Well, if the decimal were here, it would have to go one, two, three, or just look here. From here, one, two, three. So it'd have to be times 10 to the three. 1.347 times, times 10 to the three, which is a thousand, is gonna give you 1,347. So this is the same. We'll do one more. What about, you know, um, let's do, uh, 16,450, something like that, 16,450. You have to have all of the non-zero digits in your number. You have to have the one, and you have to put the decimal always after the first digit, and then the six and the four and the five always have to come next. All of the non-zero digits have to go into your scientific notation problem. Then times 10 to the power of what? If the decimal were here, it would go one, two, three, four, so it has to be times 10 to the power of four. So 1.645 times 10 to the power of four moves one, two, three, and then one more, which is that last zero there. So you always have to have your first digit, then a decimal, then uh, at least one more digit after, but if you have a lot of non-zero digits, you put them all there, then times 10, and then you pick your exponent to move the decimal the right number of spaces. Believe me, the first time you learn it, you're like, this is weird. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but just trust me, you will use it constantly. So we're gonna get more practice with this. I'd like you to solve all of these yourself. Follow me on to part two. We'll get a little more practice with scientific notation.